coming to you live from the MVG Production Studios on YouTube. It's everyone's favorite game of strategy, knowledge, and fun. This is Tic Tac Toe. And now, here's your host, the star of Tic Tac Toe, the master of the X's and O's, Brandon Scruff. Hello, once again, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the third season of Tic Tac Toe right here at MVG Productions. Glad you could join us here once again. As you can see, we're kind of, we've searched the setup a little bit using the uh, the modified uh, Caldwell set from the 90s when uh, Jim Caldwell took over as host of this great game show. But we still got great uh, another great season lined up for you guys, and I hope you're ready to enjoy along, play along with us, and see how well test your knowledge here as I test the knowledge of our contestants here trying to win all the cash as they can and see which one's going to be our Season 3 champion. We're going to be doing about 30 episodes this season, so a lot of questions coming forth, and it should be a great time here. So let's get right to it and meet our first two contestants vying for some cash and prize, uh, some cash prizes here tonight. Starting with our first X player, we have Mr. Chris Rahman. Chris, welcome in, sir. Oh, I'm doing very well. Thank you for asking. Fantastic. Joins us here from the sunshine state of Florida. Chris, tell the good folks at home a little bit about yourself, sir. Uh huh. I haven't looked for really on the play. I'm about junior. Judge me all you want. You can judge me all you want. Being a in in high school, judge all you want. I don't care. Um, usually when I do my free time, go on Roblox, watch my favorite games or whatever on TV or YouTube. Um, if if I do it, it'll probably either go for some um. Either or house, most likely. Oh, well, fantastic, sir. Glad to have you aboard with us. And good luck to you tonight on Tic Tac Do. And our circle player this time around, we have Mr. Jason Larson. Jason, welcome in. Thank you, Brent. All right, you've seen Jason on some of the other shows here, but first time him playing on my version of Tic Tac Do. Jason, for the good folks out there who may not know you, tell them a little bit about yourself. Hello, my name is Jason Larson. I am from Seattle, Washington. Quality assurance representative for an outsourcing company. Now, um, what does that actually entail for, of you doing, typically? Well, well, that means that companies who are contracted to uh, work with us uh, actually have agents who uh, work for our company. We do a lot of different tasks, but they, uh, those agents actually help people out with problems or some sort of uh, thing that they might want done and basically what I do is I assess the agents and let them know how well or how poorly they're doing. I see. Okay. Yeah. So sort of like, uh, in this case, like a middle management sort of position there. But okay. Oh, I see there. Well, I... I... For that. Mm -hmm. I see. Well, anyway, best of luck to you tonight here, Jason. Good. And uh, we're going to get right into it. Let's play some tic tac toe. Of course, you know, this is a simple game of X's and O's, players. Your objective is to get three X's or O's in a row, either across, up and down, or diagonally. First person to do that will win all the cash in the pot and get a chance to go on to our bonus round where they get to take on my pet dragon Fluffy and possibly win a whole lot more cash. All right. So with that said, let's take a look at the nine subjects you'll be playing with in this first game of Tic-Tac-Toe, and they are the following. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, our first nine subjects of tonight, we have our people and places, the secret category, science, the thousand dollar question, literature, the challenge category, music, pop quiz, and finally, what is. All right, in our what is category, of course, those are some clues from Jeopardy, so you'll need to answer those in the form of a question. Our red categories, of course, are our special categories on the board. Uh, the secret category, you answer a question correctly with the secret category. could be about anything. We double all the cash that's in the pot. The $1,000 question, of course, you get that one correct. We add $1,000 to the pot. And, of course, the challenge category, uh, I will ask you a question that will have multiple choice answers. You'll only get to hear the question only, and then I post, you'll either choose to answer the question or challenge your opponent to answer. Whoever answers the question, though, if they get it correct, they get the box. If they're wrong, the opponent gets the box in the challenge category. All right? Now, again, we're playing with the classic amounts here, so all the outside boxes are worth $200 each. The center box is a two-part question, so you'll get some extra time to think about it, and it'll be worth $300 to you, okay? And, of course, the first person to tic-tac-toe gets all the cash in the box, all right? So we're going to get started here with our X player. That is you, Chris. So when you're ready, go ahead and pick a box and let's get started. Six. Which one was that? All right. I think he said music in the lower left-hand corner. All right. Yeah, I got you here. Music in the lower left-hand corner. Starting off season three right with a music section here. Here it comes for you, Chris, under the category of music. James Todd Smith is the real name of what famous 80s rapper? Again, James Todd Smith is the famous name of which famous 80s rapper? Is it Cool Mo D or LL Cool J? Is it LL? LL Cool J is the correct answer. You got it. Well done. Put a next up on the board there. There we go. You're right You're on the board. You've got yourself $200. And now we're going to shuffle. Okay. All right. And Jason, you're going to be up now. Go ahead and pick a category. Okay. I think I will take category. All right. Going with the challenge category over here. All right. Again, uh, I'll ask you a question, and you'll choose to either answer it, or you can challenge Chris to answer it. Under the challenge category for you this time, here, here's the question, Jason. In Roman mythology, Mercury was the messenger of the gods. Who is his Greek counterpart? Of course, in Roman mythology, Mercury was the messenger of the gods. Who was his Greek counterpart? Now, you can choose to either answer this, or you can challenge Chris to answer it. What do you want to do? I do not, so I will challenge Chris to answer it. Okay, Chris. I All right, Chris, again, in Roman mythology, Mercury was the messenger of the gods. Who was his Greek counterpart? It's the correct answer, A, Apollo, B, Hermes, C, Janime, or D, Prometheus? I'll just, uh, I'm going to wager a guess on this one to say Apollo. No, I'm sorry. It was not Apollo. The correct answer was actually Hermes. That's a successful challenge, so Jason gets the box. Okay. Thank you. Well done. All right. Jason's got $400, puts $400 in the pot now as we shuffle the categories once again. All right, Chris, we're back to you. Um, let's see. Back to challenge category. You guys like the challenge category. All right. Let's see what happens here. We'll try this. Say you do with this challenge category. Okay. All right. The question here, Chris, is what was the name of the character played by Sigourney Weaver in the, in the Alien Trilogy movies? Again, what was the name of the character played by Sigourney Weaver in the Alien movies? Do you want to answer that, or do you want to challenge Jason to? 
I'm going to let Jason answer that. Okay, Jason, it's on you, sir. Again, what was the name of the character played by Sigourney Weaver in the Alien movies? Is it Dallas, Ripley, Lambert, or Parker? I'm going to have to guess and say... Ripley. The correct answer is actually Ripley. You got it. Well done. Put a circle on the board. Oh, good guess. Good guess. Well done, sir. You stole that one there from the challenge, so good for you. $600 in the pot as we shuffle the categories again. All right, Jason, we're back to you. Okay, I will take... People and places. Okay, people and places at the top of the board there. Here comes your people and places question here for you. All right, under under people and places, here is your question. All right, Jason, what famous gangster was known as Scarface? Again, what famous gangster was known as Scarface? For the box, name him. I know that it's Al Capone. And Al Capone is the correct answer. You got it. Well done. Put it all on the board. Thank you. All right, $800 in the pot. Now let's shuffle the categories again. And Chris, you got your work cut out for you now. Where do you want to go? I really gotta see this category again. What is for the block? All right, going. Well, what is the block in the center again? Another two-part question, and you'll get some extra time to think about it. Uh, the cat, your category for this what is question this time is movies. We're talking movies here. Here. All right, I'll try my best with this. Here it comes. The first one is this, Chris. The false, the Folsky soundtrack to this film won the two thousand one Grammy for Album of the Year. Again, the Folsky soundtrack to this film won the 2001 Grammy for Album of the Year. Name, name the film. That's what we're looking for on the first one. And the second one is, he won an Oscar for his work in An Officer and a Gentleman and, and, a, and an Emmy for his role in the television series Roots. Name uh, the actor there. Those are your two questions. Here's your extra time to think about them. All right, Chris, which one would you like to answer first? Uh, I'm going to have to do the first one. All right. The Folsky soundtrack to this film won the 2001 Grammy for Album of the Year. Name it. Yeah, I don't think I can get that one. I'm sorry. I guess. Um, sorry. sorry. The classic film there we were looking for is Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Uh, oh. it, was, it was the one that won Grammy for Album of the Year that year. And the other one, that he won an Oscar for his work in An Officer and a Gentleman and Emmy for Roots. Uh, we were looking for who is Louis Gossett Jr. Louis Gossett uh, Jr. is what we're looking for there. All right, so... Uh, no money for those there. We still remain with $800 in the pot, and we shuffle the categories once again. And Jason, we're over to you now. I will have to go with Pop Quiz for the win. All right, get this question correct in Pop Quiz. You will have Tic Tac, uh, you'll have Tic Tac Dough, you'll have $1,100, and you'll have a chance to go on to the bonus round, okay? Here is your, okay. here's your two-part question under Pop Quiz. First off, Jason, 
What was the military code name for the attack on Iraq by the Allies in 1991? Again, what was the military code name for the attack on Iraq by the Allies in 1991? Is it A, Desert Rat, B, Night Rain, C, Sandblast, or D, Desert Storm? That's the first one. The second one is, who was Babe Ruth playing for in 1915 when he hit his first Major League home run? Again, what team was Babe Ruth playing for in 1915 when he hit his first Major League home run? Is it A, the New York Yankees, B, the Boston Red Sox, C, the Baltimore Orioles, or D, the Chicago Cubs? Those are your two questions. Here's your extra time to think about them. <laughs> All right, Jason, which one would you like to answer first? I will answer the first one first. Okay. What was the military code name for the attack on Iraq by the Allies in 1991? Is it A, Desert Rat, B, Night Rain, C, Sandblast, or D, Desert Storm? That would be D, Desert Storm. And that is correct. And now for Tic-Tac-Doe and $1,100... Who was Babe Ruth playing for in 1915 when he hit his first Major League home run? Was it A, the New York Yankees, B, the Boston Red Sox, C, the Baltimore Orioles, or D, the Chicago Cubs? I don't know this one, but I'm going to take a guess and say... C. The Baltimore Orioles? Yes. No, I'm sorry. That's incorrect. Oh. It was originally, he was playing for the Boston Red Sox when he Boston. first was drafted to the major leagues there. Oh. That was long before he got traded no. to the Yankees. So, unfortunately, Jason can't give you that one. We remain with $800 in the pot, and we shuffle the categories once again. Please don't let me see what is again. All right, Chris. I'll try people and places from the block. All right, people and places in the center. Again, another two-part question. You'll have some extra extra time. Think about it. Okay, Chris, your two-part question is this. First off, what music legend is known as the boss? What music legend is known as the boss? That's the first one. The second one is, what famous Walt Disney character was banned in Germany, Italy, and the USSR during the 1930s? Those are your two questions. Here's some time to think about them. Okay. All right, Chris, which one would you like to answer first? I'm going to give the first one a shot. Okay. Uh, what, what music legend is known as the boss? What music legend is known as the uh huh. Does it have to be an artist? Yes. Oh boy, why do I get dry to this? Um, I'll throw in a guess for the heck of it. Uh, um, Elvis Presley? No, I'm sorry, it's not Elvis Presley. <laughs> Um, the correct answer there we're actually looking for is actually Bruce Springsteen. Bruce Springsteen's who we're looking for there. And the second one, what famous Walt Disney character was banned in Germany, Italy, and the USSR during the 1930s? Of course, that was Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse is the character we're looking for there. All right, so no harm there, no foul done, no box to claim. We still have $800 in the pot. We've got a tight game here as we shuffle. Okay, I'm going to have to go in. All right, once again, literature to win. Again, another two-part question here. Get some extra time to think about it. Here it comes under. Yeah. All right, first one, Jason. What author wrote the book 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea? Again, what author wrote the book 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea? That's the first one. And the second one is a true or false. Is it true or false? Philip K. Dick's middle name is Kindred. Again, Philip K. Dick's middle name is Kindred. Those are your two questions. Here's your extra time to think about them. All right.
right? Which one would you like to answer first, Jason? I will answer the first one first. Okay, what what author wrote the famous book 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea? That would be Jules Verne. You're correct. Now for Tic Tac Doe and $1,100, true or false, Philip K. Dick's middle name is Kindred. I'm going to take a guess and say... True? That is correct. You got it. Tic Tac Doe! Oh, oh There we go. Finally got ourselves a winner there. Well done, Jason. That is $1,100 for you. And you're going on to face the dragon here in just a minute. Well, Chris, did you have a good time here with us while you played? Yeah, it was a, it was a tough it was a tough battle between both of y'all. You just got stuck on some nasty questions in that center box there. But hopefully, you had a good time with us here. We got some nice parting gifts for you, and we will have you back on a future episode. All right. All right, no problem there. All right, eleven hundred dollars in the pot for Jason. That's what he's going to take home. But now he's going to take a shot, see if he can earn himself some more cash in the bonus round. Are you ready, Jason? Yeah. Well, come on over here. Let's see if you can beat that dragon. <laughs> All right, Jason. Well done, sir. Welcome to Baldur's Land here for you. Uh, here's how this works. We've got nine boxes up on the board there. We've got some cash or mouse behind them. One has a tick, one has a tack, and, of course, one has my pet dragon, Fluffy, there. Your objective here is to get to $1,000 or find the tick and the tack before you run into Fluffy there. If you can do that, you'll you'll be our winner. Now, if you get to $1,000, uh, whatever box, you're going to win the cash in the pot times the number of uncovered boxes still on the board. However, if you find tick and tack on any of your two picks, you'll win the tick tack jackpot, which of course, as always, starts off at $10,000. Now, if you find Tick Attack on one on your first two picks, I'll double that jackpot and make it worth twenty thousand dollars to you. All right. And of course, as always, if you have a fear of the dragon, you could stop and take the money you want and walk away. All right. All right. Best of luck to you as we shuffle the board. Fluffy, go hide somewhere and stay <laughs> hidden until we need actually need you. All right. All nine boxes are shuffled. You can get some help from the audience if you'd like, or you can make the choices on your own. But the end, the decision's yours. All right, what would you like to do? Okay, I would like to start with number two. All right, little deuce at the top of the board looking for the number two. What do we have? It's a tick. Find me a tack, oh. I give you $20,000. Okay. I hope it's behind number... Which number? Four. Number four, looking to find a tack for $20,000 behind the four. Oh, oh no! Oh. Damn it, Fluffy! Uh, well, unfortunately, that dragon caught you in the first time around. All right, let's see the rest of the board. Let's see where everything else was hiding there. Where was the tack at? Probably three. What do you guys think? Three. Oh, right one. next door, number one is where we're looking for there. So... Fortunately, there we go. That's the tick of the tack. So, unfortunately, we couldn't give away the jackpot this time around. So... Uh, we're going to add another $1,000 to that, making the jackpot worth $11,000. And we're going to and we're gonna pause for the cause right now, take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to find Jason, another opponent. And we got some more Tic Tac Joe on the way, so stay with us.
Welcome back to Tic Tac Dill here. Jason, our first champion of this season, got himself $1,100 so far, and he's ready to take on his next opponent, so let's meet him now. Playing in the circle position this game, we have Mr. Brandon Martin. Brandon, welcome in, sir. Uh, glad to be here, Brandon Scruggs. Yeah, I believe this is your first time as well playing on my uh, series of Tic Tac Dill here on the channel. That's correct. All right, fantastic. Tell the good folks at home a little bit about yourself as well, if you don't mind. I sure will. Well, my name is Brandon Martin, and I'm from the small town in Hermiston, Oregon. And I'm currently a college student at Blue Mountain Community College, and I'm currently studying broadcast journalism. And I'm currently working for as a public address announcer at the high school, and I'll do the same thing for the college as well. All right, well, fantastic. You've got a future in broadcasting looking like your way, sir. So are you ready to play some tic-tac-toe with us? And Brandon. All right, good luck to you both. Let's take a look at the nine subjects you'll be using in this game of tic-tac-toe, and they are the following. This time we have language, what is, food and drink, the secret category, math and measures, pop quiz, double or nothing, number please, and finally sports. Of course, the what is category is back again, so again, Jeopardy clues, you must answer in the form of a question as always. And the secret category again, as always, answer that question correctly, you double all the cash in the pot. The double or nothing category, you have a chance to earn two boxes in the same turn, or you could lose them both, it's a choice there. And finally, the number please category, I'm gonna give you a question with a numerical answer, a la card shark style, and um, you're going to get, uh, whoever picked the box is going to give me an answer. The opponent is going to guess if the correct answer is actually higher or lower than your guess. And whoever is correct will be the one that claims that box there. Okay? That's how those categories work. And Jason, as our returning champion, you have the right to start first. So go ahead and pick a, pick a subject. Okay. I think I'm starting. Which one? Food and drink. Okay, gotcha. Food and drink in the upper right-hand corner is going to get us started on this second game of tic-tac-toe here. Here comes your question under food and drink, sir. All right, Jason, the, the name of what Chinese dish means odds and ends? Again, the name of what Chinese dish means odds and ends? For the box, name it. Uh, I have no idea, but I'm going to guess a chow mein. No, good guess though. You're in the right. You're in the right area, but not the dish we're looking for there. So I'm sorry. Uh, the correct answer we're actually looking for is chop suey. Chop suey is what what means odds and ends there in Chinese. So. Oh yeah. All right, but you're close, just not the one we're looking for there. So, sorry, I can't give you the box there. Nothing on the board yet, so we'll shuffle, and we'll give Brandon a chance to pick. All righty. All right. Let's go ahead and do sports. Go on with sports in the lower right-hand corner. I had a feeling you were probably going there when I pulled that one up. Here comes your sports question, sir. All right. Here comes your question, sir. Steelers head coach Mike Tomlin was fined $100,000 for his actions in the Thanksgiving game against which NFL team? Again, the Steelers head coach Mike Tomlin was fined $100,000 for his actions in the Thanksgiving game against which NFL team? Is it A, the Cleveland Browns, B, the Cincinnati Bengals, C, the Baltimore Ravens, or D, the Philadelphia Eagles? Oh, my God. This, this this question. I'm gonna say the Baltimore Ravens. And the Baltimore Ravens is the correct answer. You got it. Well done. Put a no on the board. Wow. Good right. guess. There you go. Two hundred dollars in the pot. There. We shuffle the categories once again. And we're back to you, Jason. Go ahead. Go with. I will go 
with number, please. All right, going with the number, please question. All right. Number, please, it shall be. All right, uh, number, please question. All right, just a minute. All right, let me get to it here. Number, please, category, of course, again, answers with um, uh, numerical answers. You are going to have to um, take a guess and we'll see which one of you is going to get this box here. All right, under the number, please, category, here's your question, Jason. At the end of the 20th century, how many Mark and Spencer stores were there in the U.K.? Again, at the end of the 20th century, how many Marks and Spencer stores were there uh, in the UK? Oh, no. Um, you know what? I think... I I don't know um, that uh, answer at all, but I think it's going to be a low number. I think I'm going to guess... Two. Two. He says there were two Mark and Spencer stores in the UK. Brandon, do you think the correct answer is higher or lower than t two? Well, I would say I'm going to go higher than that. You're going to go even higher than that. The The actual number of Mark and Spencer sh stores that were available in the UK at the time, the correct answer was... 289 stores available, so that means, Brandon, you wow. get the box. All right. Well. All right, so that puts $400 in the pot there, and it means we're going to shuffle, and Brandon, you may have a chance to win this one. Where are we going to go? Hmm. I want to go right in the middle for the win. All right, food and drink. All right, food and drink again. Another two-part question here. Get, you get some extra time to think about it. Get this correct. It'll be tic tac toe, seven hundred dollars, and you'll be going on to the bonus round. Here's your two-part question under food and drink. First one, Brandon. What was the first name of Senor Cardini, the Mexican restauranter who created the classic salad in 1924? And what was the first name of Senior Cardini, the Mexican restauranter who created a classic salad in 1924? I need his first name. That's the first one. The second one is, what color is creme de la menthe? Again, what color is creme de la menthe? Those are your two questions. Here's your extra time to think about them. You better get this one. All right, Brandon, uh, which one would you like to answer first? I'm going to go ahead and do the second one, please. All right, the second one. What color is creme de la menthe? I have an a I have I know I'm not saying I'm not sure on this one, but I'm gonna take a guess. I'm gonna just just go out of the dark and say white. No, I'm sorry, it's not white. Uh, it's actually green. It's actually green, believe it or not. Oh, mint, mint, as in mint, which mint, of course, is green. Oh, yeah. There's your clue there. And the other one, what was the first name of Senior Cardini, the Mexican restauranter who created classic salad in 1924? Anybody? Caesar. It is Caesar. Caesar salad, of course. Oh, yeah. All right, so that's the one we're looking for. All right, so no box there. $400 remains in the pot as we shuffle. All right, uh, Jason. I'm going to have food and drink for the block. Okay, you're going to try his luck at food and drink. Again, another two-part question here. Here, uh, you get some extra time to think about it, of course. The first one for you, Jason... What are scallions? What vegetable are scallions? That's the first one. Or what type of vegetable is a scallion? I should say, to be specific there. That's what we're looking for. That's the first one. 
All right, and the second one is, what soft drink was advertised with the slogan, what's the worst that could happen? What, <laughs> what soft drink is advertised with the slogan, what's the worst that could happen? Is it A, Pepsi, B, Coca-Cola, C, Mountain Dew, or D, Dr. Pepper? Those are your two questions. Here's your extra time to think about them. All right, Jason, which one do you want to answer first? I will answer the first one. Okay, first one is... All right, what type of vegetable are scallions? They're onions. Yes, they are a type of onion, that's correct. Now for the center box, what soft drink is advertised with the slogan, what's the worst that could happen? Is it A, Pepsi, B, Coca-Cola, C, Mountain Dew, or D, Dr. Pepper? I am going to take my best guess uh, by process elimination and say D, Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper <laughs> is the correct answer. You got it for the block. Well done. Nice. Thank right. you. There he is. $700 in the pot now. Let's shuffle the categories. And Brandon, we're over to you. Let's go ahead and do language. All right, go on to language at the bottom, bottom of the board there. Here comes a language question for you. Okay. Brandon, what is the common name for the fruit Citrus Grandis? Again, what's the common name for the fruit Citrus Grandis? For the box, name the fruit. Five seconds. Oh God, I might, I wouldn't know it, but I'm gonna just say no guess on that one, unfortunately. No guess. All right. Can't yeah, give it to you. The correct answer there was it's a grapefruit. Grapefruit, oh. well, it's known as. Oh. All right. So no box there. Seven hundred dollars in the pot as we shuffle once again. Jason, we're back to you. I will pick food and drink again. All right, like we like these food and drink questions today. One of my favorite categories. I stink at it personally, but I do enjoy the questions from it. Here comes another one. All right, here comes your here comes your question, Jason. What do Americans what do Americans call what the British call an ice lolly? The British call it an ice lolly. What does it, what do Americans call it? For a box for the box, name it. That would be. What? Oh no! Popsicle. 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 That is the correct answer. Yes. You got it. Well done. Thank you. There we go. Nine hundred dollars in the pot now, and we shuffle the categories again. <laughs> Control goes back to Brandon. All right. Well. I might, I'm going to have to go for this. Language for the block. All right, get this question correct. You'll have a vertical block of Jason under language. Here comes your question. All right, Brandon. Often yelled by the Japanese forces during World War II, what word translates to, may you live 10,000 years? Again, often yelled by Japanese forces during World War II, what word translates to, may you live 10,000 years? For the block, name the word. And I know this one, probably, oh gosh. Oh gosh, I might know it, but I don't know. Thank you. 
guess. Uh, I'm gonna pass on that one, Brandon. No guess. All right. Uh, anybody in the audience? Um, Kamikaze. Close. Not the one we're looking for. The correct answer this time was actually Bonsai. Bonsai. Oh, oh dang. We're known for the famous oh. Bonsai bombers as well. All right. Yeah, All right. No box. No box there. Nine hundred dollars remains in the pot. We shuffle once again. Jason, a break for you. Okay. I will go with Pop for the win. All right. Get this question correct under Pop Quiz. It'll be Tic Tac Doe. Another $1,100 for you, and you'll be going back for another shot at the bonus round. Here comes your question. All right, Jason. What in which movie features the songs I Feel Pretty and Tonight? Again, which movie features the songs I Feel Pretty and Tonight? Is it A, West Side Story, B, My Fair Lady, C, Carousel, or D, Guys and Dolls? I am almost sure West Side Story. And that is correct for Tic Tac Doe. Jason. Well done. Congratulations Thank to you, sir. You. Another $1,100 goes into your bank there, bringing your total now up to $2,200. And you get another chance to face off against Fluffy here in just a minute. Well, Brandon, did you have a good time with us while you played, sir? Oops. All right, well, we thank you for joining us here. We got some nice parting gifts for you, and we will hopefully have you back later on this season because we got a lot of seasons still left to play, all right? Okay, with that said, Jason, you're up to $2,200. Let's see if you can take home 11000 more playing on our bonus round. Are you ready to take on that dragon? All right, come on over and see if you can beat that dragon. All right, Jason, welcome back to the bonus round here again. Another shot at trying to take down Fluffy and that jackpot prize. Of course, we add a thousand dollars to it every time that the jackpot's not claimed. So we're going for eleven thousand dollars this time. If you can find the tick and the tech, find them on your first two picks. We double it to twenty-two thousand dollars. Okay. Okay. All right, best of luck to you. We're going to go ahead and shuffle the board up. Fluffy again, go hide somewhere and stay there preferably. Again, you get some help from the audience if you like, or you can make choices on your own. It's up to you. All right, where would you like to begin? I would like to start with number one this time. Number one, top of the charts. Let's see what we have behind number one. Hey, there's the tech. Hopefully we have better luck this time around. Find the tick. I give you twenty-two thousand dollars. Okay. I hope it's behind number eight. Number eight, going in the dragon's cave. Hopefully he is not home. We want to see a tick for twenty-two thousand dollars. What's it eight? No, it's not the tick, but you got 500 bucks now. Take $500 and stop, or you can go on. You need another 500 or the tick. I will go on. All right, give me another number. I will take number five, please. Center of the board, what do we have? Looking for a tick for the jackpot win. Find five. There's $400. Oh. All right, so you're up to $900. So, Jason, this will actually be your final pick, sir. You are either going to win or you're going to lose on this next one. You find $100 or better, you are a winner. You find that tick is worth $11,000 to you. Or you could stop and take the $900 you got now. What do you want to do? Okay, I would like to go. All right. 
Okay. Uh, show me anything but the dragon behind number seven. Number seven, lower left hand corner. For looking for a win behind seven. What do we have? It's a take. We got a winner. All right, congratulations, sir. That is $11,000 in cash for you. But now you get a chance to play our super bonus game since you found both the tick and the tech. We got five boxes still left on the board, two, three, four, six, and nine. If you can find my dragon now, well, I'm going to double your winnings, and you're going to take home $22,000. If you don't find the dragon, whatever cash amount you find behind there, I'll multiply it by 10, and we'll add it to your winnings, all right? You found Tick. Okay. You found Tech. Can you find my dragon? Yeah. All right, he's going with number six. Six is his choice here. Let's see if we can find a dragon behind number six for $22,000. Oh my God, we got a dragon. It's a winner. Nicely done, sir. Congratulations. $22,000. Thousand dollars for you. Well played. Well done. Add that to your winnings now. You are up to a one game total of twenty four thousand two hundred dollars in cash and prizes, sir. Let's take a look at the rest of the board. Show you everything was still there and accounted for there. Congratulations to you, sir. That is twenty four thousand dollars and. We're going to go ahead and take one more commercial break, and we're going to give our other audience members a chance to see if they can find the dragon. As we play a little Dragon Finder, we'll do that right after the commercial break. Stay with us. Welcome back to Tic Tac Joe. We're just about out of time for today, but we're going to give our audience members a chance to see if they can earn themselves a little cash for their bank accounts here, guys. We're playing a little Dragon Finder here. Uh, we've got five people in the studio audience right now, so everybody's going to get one shot to pick a box up here. It's quite simple. Find my dragon, I'm going to pay you off another $5,000 added to your MVG bank accounts. Uh, if you don't find the dragon, uh, unfortunately, you get no money. It's quite simple. We're playing a little dragon finder, and we're going to start right at the bottom of the list, work our way to the top. Travis, we'll start with you, sir. Nine numbers up there. Where do you think my dragon's hiding this time? He went home. He's in eight. You think he's in his cave. Behind eight. Let's see. Show me a dragon. Nope, that's a tick, sir. All right, Will, we go to you. Uh-huh. Uh, what up? Sorry? Yeah, we're playing a little Dragon Finder, sir. 5000 bucks on the line here if you could find my dragon. Uh oh we're, we're, we're trying to play Find the Fluffy. Yes. Uh, I don't think he's in the middle. I'm going to say number three. Number three, top right corner. Show me a dragon. Nope, that's 250 ah. sir. No dragon for you. Over to JVD. He's listening. Jay Van, are you there? Uh, he was. What? Mm, nope. No Jay Van. He was muted. All right. He was uh, muted, so I think he told me. It's okay. No harm. We'll go to our champion, Jason. Jason, you found the dragon once. Can you do it again? Okay. If, um. If I'm, uh. Allowed to uh, play this, I will take a guess and say he's behind number nine. Number nine, last on the board. Let's see, do we have a dragon? Nope, that is no. 300 there. So, sorry. Brandon, over to you. All right, well, where the blue heck? I find that fluffy, that god darn dragon. Hmm. 
Well, well, well. Say, the dragon's behind number two. Number two, little deuce, top of the board. Do we have a dragon? Nope, no dragon there. So that's uh, everybody but J Van. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick on his behalf here. Hopefully, I might get lucky find my own dragon. Uh, let's see. If I know my dragon, he's been he's notoriously lazy. I want to say he if he moved, he didn't move far. I'm gonna say he's in the middle, box five. For J Van, do I get him five grand? Nope, not a dragon. But hey, we would have won the game nonetheless. Let's go see. Let's go see where the rest of the boxes are. Where Where is Fluffy? Nope. Yeah. He went all the way across the road that time, number four. All right. So unfortunately, nobody gets the Dragon Finder bonus this time around. But that's okay. We'll try again on our next episode. But that's gonna do it for us here, folks, on this very first episode of season three of Tic Tac Toe. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. I want to thank you guys for watching. Remember, if you like the series and you want to see more of it, all you got to do is click that subscribe button down below and ring the bell. That way you never miss out on all the fun and games going down here at MVG Productions. And until we return once again with more questions and more chances for cash, I'm your host, Brandon Scruggs, saying thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time right here on Tic Tac Doe. Take care. Bye for now, folks. Some of our party contestants will receive Bissell's Double Action Floor Sweep. It snaps up dirt and litter off of carpets and bare floors, great for quick pickups to clean vacuums, furnished by Bissell. 20 Mule Team Borax, natural for cleaning and freshening all the family wash, 20 Mule Team Borax. The Vitamix 3600, a stainless steel 3 minute bread maker and home yogurt factory. Refuses without waste, cooks without burning, freezes instant ice cream and offers 800 great recipes. The Vitamix 3600. A supply of Lollipop Dog Biscuits, the pet treats dogs and cats love, feed your dog, Lollipop. From Gallery Homes, a book of home improvements, Gallery of Home Brokers. If you're selling or buying a home, you'll find that they do their homework from Gallery of Homes. A five pound Raft Honey Glazed Ham, looks as good on the outside as it tastes on the inside from Raft. And one lucky member of our studio audience will receive a gift certificate for the purchase of any item listed in the world famous Spiegel Catalog. Spiegel, with over 50,000 quality items offering value, selection, and savings, Spiegel, Chicago, 60609. This is Michael Gentry speaking for Tic Tac Doe. A Barry and Enright production in association with MBG Productions.